Hi y'all, in this video I'm going to talk a little bit about crafting narratives. It's related to the video I just did on lies, damned lies, and statistics. Ordinarily, when the media or some organization or other wants to push a narrative, they try to be slightly clever about um, smuggling it in through the back door, but on the gun control topic now, the media has, large sections of the media I should say, not all of it, have dropped any pretense of even trying to fake like they're being objective. And if you look at the Parkland survivors that they are uh, parading around, you are, well I guess since they're talking about how they're children, I guess these really are, literally, the golden children. Because, uh, and CNN has already admitted to this, they will have them come on to the show and talk about, you know, whatever, you know, speak their piece, and then say, no, and not really challenge them on any of the false claims that they make. It's one thing, if a media has a, a bias, as you know, most news organizations do, uh, some are just more honest about whether they have one or not, they will at least try, as a matter of journalistic integrity, to find some third party who has a view, and then they'll say, according to this third party, uh, this is the view, and then they'll have like a little disclaimer, you know, for the opinion pieces. Uh, the views reflected herein do not represent, do not necessarily represent the views of CNN or MSNBC or whatever the network is. Um, but you know, they of course have cherry picked who they're going to let publish that. So there is, in the one hand, on the one hand, it's not them actually saying it, but on the other hand, they have chosen this person precisely because the person is going to say what CNN or MSNBC or Fox, you know, they do it on all the channels, Fox News, whatever it is would actually say if they weren't trying to pretend to be somewhat objective. So that's slightly dishonest. It's, you know, it's getting the narrative out there, using your uh, space for it, and making sure that all the space that you devote to it, or the overwhelming majority of the space that you devote towards pushing that narrative or promoting that view, it, it all leans towards the same particular view. You don't get a, a lot of differences of opinion. But now, uh, you know, but those things will be edited a little bit if it's in a live interview and a person says, oh, and, and you know, they smuggle in something uh, really goofy or it's factually false, of which the newscaster or the interviewer is aware, the newscaster will, you know, very often correct them, wait a minute, where do you get that data from? What's your source for that? Um, or, you know, no, that's not actually how, you know, there'll be some give and take there, but not with the Parkland survivors. They are the golden literal children. Whatever they say, you just let them them talk. Now, on the, the proxy thing I was talking about earlier, they'll frequently get um, someone they'll interview, and then they will trim out the parts of the, that interview for time reasons only, of course, that they don't like, and they'll keep the bits that they do. Um, so they, they are tailoring the message that way. But those, those tend to be people who aren't there to be uh, advocates for a position. They're not activists. There, you know, you saw the murder happen, you saw the bank robbery, or, you, you know, whatever it was. They'll, they'll try to get out of that the, the key facts or the key information, the key take on the relevant information. And, and you know, so they edit out the rest of it, the, the you know, the stammering, the uhs and whatnot, and they put that up there. That's, and when you're doing those types of interviews, you know, what was it like when you saw your child get, you know, eaten by the hamster or whatever it was? You don't do a lot of pushback because the person's not there to promote a position they're there to give you their first person impressions about what it is like to have been the person in their shoes seeing that thing happen. And it's just their opinion. And you know, you can't be wrong about how you feel about something. If you see something bad happen, you're going to have a certain set of feelings. And they're not all going to be the same. One day you'll feel one way, one day you'll feel more of the same, but more intensely, you know, the same thing, but more intensely. Over time it'll change. Uh, sometimes it varies minute to minute when you've seen a tragedy. And you don't really want to be an asshole and push those people around and go, oh, your opinion is invalid. You're, you're feeling the wrong way because there's no such thing as feeling the wrong way. You're entitled to feel whatever you are going to feel, whatever you feel. It'd be stupid to say you can't feel it. It's what you do, uh, despite what you feel, that, that matters. And, you know, an honest person isn't going to say, oh, woe is me because this bad thing happened. I'm entitled to go around and just lie. They're certainly entitled to go around and tell you their opinions, even if... The, the what they think is true that's informing those opinions isn't true and you can push on that but you want to do it a little bit not much these kids aren't showing up as oh you were the you know they always have a little thing at the bottom uh, at the little bottom of the person's name under the picture when they're talking it says witness the hamster eating the child or whatever it was I think that what it should say is bribed with cheeseburger to appear on our program but any in any event um, you'll have that go on. That's not what these kids are. They are now activists. They're political activists. And no longer, once you step into that, the, those shoes, 
do you get to, on the one hand, do what this David Hogg guy is doing, which is heap a bunch of shit on people, he, you know, heap and heap and heap and accuse them of all kinds of things, oh, you're a child murderer, oh, you support child murderers, oh, you're taking blood money from child murderers, that kind of thing. And then the moment someone says, oh, you didn't get into your, child, your first college of choice, you go, oh, I'm just a kid, how could you say that to a helpless, defenseless kid, woe is me. You know, it's the, the uh, victim as bully kind of thing. They use their victim status as a shield, but the the brutality of what they uh, were adjacent to or saw or whatever as a sword or a club with which to bludgeon people. It's just so dishonest. Now, on the one hand, it's sad to see that the media is dishonest, but on the other hand, uh, it's interesting to see that the media is now realizing that they are this dishonest and they're not even pretending, on, in this case, like the Brian Stetler, Stelter, whatever his name is, the really annoying, disingenuous guy who you know, always finds some reason why the, if you, you say something critical of the media, well, we have a part to play in that, of course, because it'd be stupid to deny it. But the real problem is, it's, a, it's always something else. It's like Hillary Clinton. Why did she lose the election? Well, I can tell you, I can't tell you what the problem is, but I can tell you what it definitely was not. Hillary Clinton. And it was not her fault she lost. It was everything else. All those stupid women who are married to their men who just don't have any opinions of their own and only do what they're ordered to do. You know, that's, that's why she lost. So whatever the problem is in the world, it's, it's definitely not the media's fault, or in the alternative, if the media does have some role to play in the complicated ecosystem of today's media, it's very minimal. It, the problem is really out there, you know, somewhere else. Anyway, they've dropped any pretense of even claiming to, pretending to be objective. They are outright admitting. We have, they, they have let these people come on to the show, say things that are factually untrue, and then choose not to interrupt them, to correct them when they're factually wrong, or if it's uh, some ambiguous, I mean, the claim isn't ambiguous, but the sources of the, of the information is ambiguous, to push them on, where are you getting this from? Like the guy, you know, it's, it's really sad that this David Hogg kid that, um, is the child of an FBI agent and a school teacher, each of whom cares so little about the United States Constitution and our system of government that they've allowed their child to grow up to months within his adulthood without having any concept whatever about the United States government and the governments of the states. He thinks that sheriffs work for the governors for some inexplicable reason. I mean, it's a, it's a minor point, but to think that his dad was an FBI agent who has so little regard for our system of government that he's allowed his children to grow up without any knowledge of civics. That is shameful. I can only hope that the average FBI agent is not like this former FBI agent with respect to teaching their children about this country. Uh, because the other view would be that the FBI agents generally care so little about the U.S. Constitution, and that's not a very good place to be in, in, in thinking about the FBI. Although I will, I will say on the FBI point, uh, you don't need a special counsel, you don't need some independent agency, you don't need an inspector general. What you need is a pink slip enema, fish rot from the head. If you want to reform the FBI, you must remember this essential fact about it. It was started as a corrupt organization with a corrupt leader and a corrupt leadership. It has always been that way. There is a culture from the beginning of doing their of doing its best at the highest levels, right down to you know the people who are carrying out these these types of things, to get around the law as clandestinely as they can. If you want to reform that, you need to break that uh, that cycle in the chain, which means all the top leadership ship just need to go away and most of, of the leadership right below them needs to wait. You need to promote, find the people who are under them or from some external agency to come in and take over. You've got to break it because all you've got is an organization that's been handed down one person after the other, each of whom is essentially doing monkey, is essentially following monkey see, monkey do. This is the way we've always done it. This is the way we're going to continue to do it unless and until something comes in and makes us stop. It's not gonna be inspectors general. It's not gonna be special counsels. Because we all know that no matter what is found by an independent uh, agency or an independent uh, evaluation, charges are not going to lie at the end of the road. You can do whatever you want there, and they'll just retire you, or occasionally, once that I know of your senior, they'll fire you. Um, but they're not going to be handing out prosecutions for abuse of power or anything like that. So you've got to break the Trump and Sessions need to clean house. We can do without all those... Uh, those bureaucrats and the, the bad habits they've developed over the years. But anyway, 
that's the uh, the kind of FBI agent uh, who is David Hogg's father is the kind of person who swore, you know, uh, I'm a public servant, uh, uphold, defend the Constitution, blah, 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 but I'm not going to take a step to make sure my son understands thing the first about our system of government, our separation of powers, the role of the federal government, the roles of the state governments, the roles of the political subdivisions under the state governments, and he managed to make it through the schools in Florida without being aware of the Florida system. Um, this is spectacularly mind-blowing, and this is one of the golden, so-called golden children of the media, the, the, uh, <laughs> the know-nothings. With respect to government affairs, government and civics, they are Luddites. They know virtually nothing about our, our system, and yet they are just allowed to prattle on and on and on and on and on. Um, I wish they would treat these kids the same way they would treat the president. Uh, actually, I wish they'd treat him slightly better, uh, which is to say that when he says something false, just point out that it's false and not, not spin out a whole bunch of manufactured stories. When it's false, interrupt and say, I'm sorry, that's not true. Sit, sit people down who know what they're talking about with these, with these uh, activists, these kids turned activists, so that way when they make these claims, they can, in fact, be called out on their bullshit. But that's not the tack that many in the media have taken. They have taken uh, the view that just let them talk, let them make up whatever they want, and, uh, you know, it'll all be fine. Because at the end of the day, the media has a goal, much of the media has a goal, it wants one particular outcome, and it is getting ever more increasingly desperate to produce that outcome that now, since they've seen they can't get away, they can't manage to produce it with their ordinary ways of twisting the truth and doing fluff and all this other stuff, now they're just going to drop off pretense of anything and just you know, lie, lie, or let lies be told and willingly choose not to correct the record. Willingly invite people whom they know will lie and let them tell the lie. That is disgraceful. All right, have a great day.